Now, not in one of those is there any evidence of a geometrical armature of angles of precise proportions being laid down, either at the deeper level or at the top level. It's not there. Evidence about the tombstone is not there either. What exactly does Sonia's diary say about the tombstone? How does he describe it? He describes it as um, a tomb, simply as a tomb, discovered a tomb. Does he say whose tomb? No, he doesn't say whose tomb. Does he say what it looked like? No, he, um, he doesn't uh, describe the tomb as such. There are illustrations which purport to be of those stones in a book by a chap called Stublein. Better known as a pioneer weatherman, Stublein's booklet on engraved stones is central to Schellenberger's theory, because one of Stublein's sketches records the Blanchefort tombstone with the motto, I too in Arcadia, and the arrow dividing its middle. This puzzled the popular historian Pierre Jarnac when he first read about the lost gold of Rennes-le-Château. I bought this book about 30 years ago because I'm interested in treasure stories. Certain references in the index caught my eye, like Eugene Stublein's Engraved Stones of the Languedoc. I then consulted other works to see if Eugene Stublein had published anything else. And I found a copy of A Trip to Thermal Establishments. This region of France is dotted with small spa towns. And what Stublein had written was a guide to them. What struck me when I compared the booklet on engraved stones were the signatures. In thermal establishments, Stublein's signature is completely different. This entire booklet on engraved stones by Eugene Stublein is a complete forgery. It's possible that the illustration of the tombstone is a complete fabrication. And that doesn't worry you? It doesn't in the context that it actually supports the location which we found independently by other means. Schellenberger and Andrews don't think the evidence of forgery discredits their theory because they believe the forgers themselves are initiates, privy to the secret of the thousand-year conspiracy that started with the Templars. Henry Lincoln, among others, has suggested that modern Freemasons preserve the Templar's secret. But historians of Freemasonry see no evidence for this. I had a meeting with Henry Lincoln and his partners. They were interested in following up possible links between the Knights Templar, Freemasonry, and what had been going on at Rendell Chateau. And I can't see a connection at all. They were destroyed in the 14th century, and the first evidence that we have for Freemasonry doesn't come until the early 1600s, an enormous gap. But could I find a connection, a link with the Order of Knights Templar? And could I begin to identify this shadowy but powerful organization? And then I found a document. Here, at the Bibliothèque Nationale in Paris, there is an obscure little book of great interest to searchers for the truth of Rennes-le-Château. When I first saw this document, I was by no means inclined to regard it as authoritative, nor even reliable as evidence. And this list of names is of the alleged Grand Masters of that order, an order which this document claims was founded by the Knights Templars themselves. Victor Hugo. Jean Cocteau, Leonardo da Vinci, Isaac Newton. Some of these names are so illustrious that the list seemed just the sort of grandiose pedigree that would be created for itself by a lunatic fringe body of eccentrics playing at secret societies. But it's all too easy to make assumptions and not to keep an open mind. What convinced Lincoln was the evidence of the parchments Certainly Zion seems to be emphasized as we examine them. Here it is simply reversed. And here, 
The odd breaking of words at the ends of lines spells it out again. Obviously, the word has some significance. Prior to Zion was a secretive organization. Um, there is a lot of debate over whether they were an independent organization or a secret organization which split from the Templars. Be that as it may, there are charters and documents which show its existence. In fact, those charters and documents record an abbey of Zion, but never a priory. Do those charters recall it Priory of Zion or something else? They call it Priory of Zion and it was then changed uh, in 1188 to the Order of the Rose Cross and Veritas. Are you sure that it wasn't called the Abbey of Zion? Yes, I'm uh, sorry, yes you're right. I think it was called the Abbey of Zion. There's no evidence for a Priory of Zion until the 1950s. To find it, you go to the little town of Saint-Julien. Under French law, every new club or association must register itself with the authorities. And that's why there's a dossier here showing that a priory of Zion filed the proper forms in 1956. According to a founding member, this eccentric association took its name not from Jerusalem, but from a nearby mountain. The dossier also notes that the priory's self-styled Grand Master, Pierre Plantard, who is central to this story, has done time in jail. Jean-Luc Chaumet has compiled his own file on Pierre Plantard. It contains police reports which show that before the war he had formed a phony order of chivalry, an order to which Jews and Masons were not welcome. During the war, Plantar published a bizarre newsletter which warned Hitler to beware of plots by Freemasons. After the war, when the French Republic was restored, Plantar claimed that he had really been a member of the resistance with the nom de guerre Pierre de France. Just after the war, he published a handout claiming that he was part of the resistance. What he got was a letter addressed to all the French by General de Gaulle, thanking them for their courage during the war. That's all. 25 million Frenchmen received the same letter. At some point in the early 60s, Pierre Plantard began to take an interest in the mystery of Rennes le Chateau. By now, he claimed to have royal blood in his veins. Plantard was accompanied by a real aristocrat, the dissolute and disinherited Marquis de Cherisy. Together, they set out to write a book and make money from the mystery. They were very different. De Cherisy is now dead. He was an actor whose stage name was Lamade. He was a very cultured man with a brilliant university degree. Unfortunately, he led a life on the tiles, as we say in France. Plantard reminds me of a big nocturnal bird, very gloomy, very tall, very skinny. He's not that cultured, in fact he's quite ignorant. But Plantard has a talent, a flair for symbolism, he finds symbols like some people find mushrooms. Unable to find a publisher, Plantard and de Cherisy invited de Sede to rewrite their book and share in its profits. They also told him about the secret dossier, where de Sede found a genealogy of the Merovingian kings proving that Pierre Plantard descended from Dagobert II and was heir to the throne of France. The secret dossier convinced de Sede, and it convinced Henry Lincoln. And my researchers have uncovered a priory document of genealogies, tracing a descent from the Merovingians and leading to a man called Pierre Plantard de Saint Clair, in whose veins it seemed now ran the blood of the long-forgotten Dagobert II. 
Jean-Luc Chaumet helped the BBC set up its interview with Plantard in this very room over his mother's tiny art gallery. This is the place where the BBC uh, television has done uh, the interview for René Le Chateau. Plantard was there, uh, Rod, uh, Harry Lincoln was there, and Roy Davis and all the team on this place. According to Chaumet, Henry Lincoln was convinced that he was about to interview the man he called Le Roi Perdu, the Lost King. As for Plantard, he played his part to perfection. After some natural hesitation, he at last agreed to talk about his place in this story. Monsieur Plantard, can you tell us whether the Priory of Zion still exists today? At this moment, Zion still exists. One of its more recent members, one of its last Grand Masters, was Jean Cocteau. Everyone knows this. Monsieur Plantard, over the centuries you have, uh, uh, how shall I put it, uh, you have supported the Priory of Zion. We have supported Zion, and Zion has supported us. We? Who are we? We? I'm speaking of the Merovingian line, for our line is descended from Dagobert II. The Merovingians, it was they who made France. Without them there would be no France. In fact, Plantard's royal lineage rests on another forgery. His name has been inserted into a genealogy copied word for word from a popular history magazine. Plantard's real ancestor was a 16th century peasant who grew walnuts. Several of us investigated this, including me, and what we all noticed was that the secret dossiers must have been the work of either Plantard or de Cherizet, because the deposit slip from the copyright registration at the library enabled us to tell who had deposited the booklets. De Sade's book enjoyed success, but he, Plantard, and de Cherisy fell out over money. Lawyers exchanged letters, and ugly accusations were aired. After their quarrel, Pierre Plantard made it known that the parchments published in de Sade's book were fakes. In 1971, in 1971, I received a letter from Philippe de Cherisy implying he was the author of the two parchments published by Gérard de Sède. Um, the parchments are pretty central to your thesis. Yes. Have you seen them? No. We've seen them only in photographic form. Do you know anyone who has seen them? No. We've seen, once again, they've, they've only been known to exist on, on photograph. Uh, Plantard Plantar trusted me because I was writing a book about him, and he gave me the original parchments. And here they are, parchment 2 and parchment 1. On this one, he's written a note in his own hand. This is the original document faked by Philip de Cherisy, which Gérard de Serre reproduced in his book, The Gold of Rennes. Lord of Rennes. Have you ever seen the two parchments? No, um, very few people have. Has anyone um, seen the two parchments? Well, I don't think um, we know of anybody seeing the two parchments. Um, Henry Lincoln has seen photographs of the parchments and Photographs of the parchments were published in the Messianic Legacy. Et voici donc le, le, le deuxième document. Uh, here is the second parchment, which has earned thousands in royalties. It is.